With the NBA season right around the corner, I thought it'd be a great idea to do a video over the best storylines of every NBA team. And to make this video a little more interesting and to spice it up just a little bit, we're going to make this a tier list. So we're going to be ranking the best storyline from every NBA team. Now, full disclaimer before we get into this video. One, all these opinions will be mine and none of these are facts. And two, I am basing this off the best storylines, not the best team. So it's not a tier ranking on who's the best team in the NBA. It's over who has the most compelling storylines that I want to follow as an NBA fan. And it also might be who you might want to follow as an NBA fan. Before we get into every team, I need to set the stage of the current NBA and some overarching storylines that is currently going on in the NBA. The main storyline in the NBA this year is the CBA. The CBA that was passed a few years ago has completely shifted the NBA. You have championship teams like the Nuggets refusing to pay key role players in hopes of not going above the second apron. And then you have teams like the Lakers who have made zero moves the entire offseason all because of CBA. Now, if you're not an NBA contract savant and you have no idea what a second apron is and it sounds like a foreign language to you, let me break it down in a very simple way. The second apron is a salary threshold that penalizes NBA teams for overspending on their rosters. If you get into the second apron, you have trade restrictions, draft restrictions, and restrictions on how much money you can offer certain players. And to make things worse, the owner has to pay a tax if that team exceeds their threshold forcing many teams to move in ways we've never seen before. For example, Carnsey Towns was traded in order for the Timberwolves to free up cap space. Jalen Brunson took a $113 million pay cut so his team could pay players. And even LeBron James was willing to take less money to help the Lakers out. This new CBA has completely shifted the way NBA teams are constructed. It has been labeled the dynasty killer and is one of the main reasons we have not seen a repeat champion since 2018, which is the biggest storyline going into the season this year. So naturally, we're gonna go ahead and start with the Boston Celtics. So the main storyline around the Celtics this year is will they be able to go back to back? Currently, they have everybody under contract, but it's extremely hard to build a dynasty with the new CBA. Last year they walked through the east and they're on track to do it again. The Celtics are an S tier storyline and one of the main teams we will be talking about this season. Now let's move over to the Dallas Mavericks who played the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals last year. The biggest news coming out of Dallas is the addition of Klay Thompson. Klay brings elite shooting and championship experience to this team. His shooting could easily elevate this already high power offense. But the other end of the floor is what worries me about Klay. Klay used to be one of the best two-way defenders in the NBA, but he has lost his defensive edge due to injuries and old age. This will hurt the Mavericks because he is a replacement for Derrick Jones Jr. Jones played a crucial role in the championship run last year and had the assignment of guarding the best player on the other team. So with him gone, there's really no one to take his role. But the top storyline for this team will hinder on Luka. Will Luka lead this Dallas team to their first ring since 2011? I think the Mavericks are a really intriguing team this season. I'm gonna keep my eye on them. I'm gonna put them at A tier. Okay, the Oklahoma City Thunder. OKC, one name, Shea Gilgis Alexander. He's a star. They were one of the youngest teams in the NBA last year and also were the youngest team ever to win their conference. Shea had an MVP caliber year, Jalen Williams took a big leap becoming the second option, and Chet proved that he was worth the wait. Last year was kind of a shock. Everyone knew they would be good, but no one knew they'd be this good this fast. This year, however, they have a target on their back. Last year, a second round balance was cool because you were young and you were just kind of happy to be there. But this year, you were one of the premier teams in the West and a deep playoff run is widely expected. Especially with their key offseason pickups, a lot of eyes will be on this team. And I think that the Oklahoma City Thunder are a storyline. The New York Knicks. The Knicks were the talk of the offseason. Last year was one of the best Knicks seasons we've seen in decades. Jalen Brunson blossomed into a superstar and led the Knicks to the second best record in the East. This offseason, they reunited the Nova Boys by trading for Mikael Bridges and then traded one of the Nova Boys away for Carl Anthony Towns. Julius Randle was also included in that trade as well. So now the Knicks have a starting lineup of Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, OG Ananobi, Mikael Bridges, and Carl Anthony Towns. It's one of the deadliest in the NBA. I talked about this team in depth in my last video about what cat brings to this team and how he can reunite this offense. A team like the Knicks will always be interesting because of where they are and who they are, but it feels like this is the first year in a long time that it's actually a good reason to follow the Knicks. I think the Knicks are actually S tier this year. I think it's gonna be a great season and a great story to follow. I'm really looking forward to some New York Knicks basketball. S tier. 
My Lakers. Oh, ah, I should have put a Laker jersey on for this video, man. I would love to automatically give my Lakers an S tier storyline because we got LeBron and Bronny playing together. Like, what's better than that? But that's really it. The Lakers had an extremely boring offseason. I mean, Dalton Connect was the best thing that happened to them. And don't get me wrong, he's a great player and he's going to add a much needed shooting to this roster. But that's really all they did. JJ Redick is a first time head coach at any level. I mean, he was literally coaching his son before this. So who knows how this will go. The Lakers season is really a weird one for everyone involved in it. LeBron and AD proved that they're still one of the top duels in the NBA during the Olympics, but it also shined a light on how bad this Laker roster really is. The Lakers will never be boring because they have LeBron James, but outside of watching him and Bronny play together, this team really has nothing going for them story-wise. And I hate to say it, but I think the Lakers are C tier. The Minnesota Timberwolves became a fan favorite last season, especially because of their star, Anthony Edwards. He rose to become one of the new faces of the league and was drawing endless Michael Jordan comparisons. But with the Wolves trading away Cat, it raises some serious questions around this team. Joyce Randle is coming off a season ending surgery, which poses a question around his health. Will he be able to play around Anthony Edwards and be the second scoring option that Cat was for this team? This team made the Western Conference Finals last year and making a move this drastic is kind of shocking when you are favored to be the best team in the West already. And once again, it speaks to the fear that owners have of this new CBA. Now the Wolves did get a little deeper bringing in Dante DiVincenzo from the New York Knicks in the cat trade and drafting Rob Dillingham who looked really good in the preseason. But there are a lot of questions around this team going into the year. And it's gonna be a team that I'm personally gonna keep my eyes on and I think a lot of other people should too. Uh, I can't quite give them the S tier because I think there are, you know, the cat thing is great and ant, but I think A tier is where they deserve to be. So we're gonna put them right there. Also to know, inside the tiers, I'm not saying the Mavs have a better storyline than the Timberwolves. It's just how I wrote the video. There's no order inside the tiers. Okay, let's continue. So let's move over to the team that the Minnesota Timberwolves swept in the postseason. That'd be the Phoenix Suns. The Suns shocked the basketball world last year when they traded for Bradley Bill, adding him to a big two of Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, creating a new big three in Phoenix. But after an injury riddle season, the Bradley Bill trade is not looking too hot. The success of the Suns will depend on Bradley Bill's health. When he's healthy, they look unstoppable, unless you have JD McDaniels, of course. But I think the biggest news coming out of Phoenix this year is the acquisition of Tyus Jones. The number one problem for the Suns last season was their lack of a point guard. Booker was in charge of this role last year, and although he did a fine job, I just think it took a lot away from his scoring. Adding in Tyus Jones is honestly the perfect fit. Tyus had the best assist to turnover ratio in the NBA last year and is a true pass first point guard. And honestly, I'm a huge fan of Tyus Jones. I wanted him to go to the Lakers, and I could talk about how well he will gel with this Phoenix Suns offense for hours, but to keep this video moving, I'm going to rank the Suns at a B tier because you have Devin Booker, you have Kevin Durant, and Bradley Beal, so they're always going to be a high team, but I don't think they're one of the best storylines. The Sixers. The Sixers feel like the same team every year, to be completely honest with you. Joel B is going to be dominant, things are going to get hurt, and they're going to get bounced in the playoffs, and that happened again last year. The only bright spot of last season was Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey had an all NBA caliber year and made it clear that the Sixers need to build around him. But due to Embiid's consistent health problems, the Sixers needed another star. And that's where Paul George comes in. PG is joining this team at just the right time. He doesn't have to carry a heavy load and will have a significant impact on the Sixers. Despite all of that, I personally feel like I'm in my I don't care about the Sixers era. I'm really tired of them. They feel like the same team every year. The Paul George pickup is intriguing enough for at least put me at a B tier with the Sixers and not a C. So B tier, Philadelphia 76ers. The Denver Nuggets. After winning the 2023 NBA championship, the Denver Nuggets have been hit hard by the CBA, losing Bruce Brown last offseason and now KCP, two pivotal pieces to the 2023 championship team. This means that Christian Brown once again will have an increased role. The addition of Russell Westbrook should be interesting though and Russ has kind of been in a weird spot in his career the last two, three years, but this one feels a little bit different, um, especially because I think that the Nuggets really need him to be good for them to get back to the finals. But overall, I don't think the Nuggets actually have a pretty interesting storyline. I thought last year was the year they're gonna repeat 
and now i honestly don't really think that highly of the nuggets and also i think their storyline is kind of boring so i'm gonna give them the lowest one we've given so far at d tier it's the end of an era for the golden state warriors with clay thompson leaving for the last couple years there was still this small glimpse of faith that the warriors big three could make one more run at it if they had the right supporting cast well that fate's completely over now not only did they lose clay thompson they also lost chris paul to san antonio spurs now warriors did retool kind of nicely with this roster adding in kyle anderson buddy healed melton but nothing that really moves the needle i like to call this era of warriors basketball the let's appreciate steph curry while he's still in a warriors jersey era because that's basically what it is other than that there's really nothing else interesting about the golden state warriors so i'm gonna put them at a d tier One of my favorite teams right now, the Orlando Magic. Oh, God, love me some magic, man. Paolo Bencaro is a star. Jalen Suggs is a true 3 and D. Franz Wagner is a walking bucket. Oh, God, love the magic team. Last year, they were one of my favorite teams to watch. I had them as my sleeper team, and they made a big leap. I thought they were going to be a playing team. They finished fifth in the East as one of the youngest teams in the NBA. And I think they're gonna take another leap this year. They added in KCP, which will improve this team's three-point shooting and give them the much needed veteran presence in the locker room. The real question will be how much better will they get? Can Paolo become an all NBA player? Will Jalen Suggs make an all defensive team? These are two questions that a lot of people will be asking. Now, this is 100% biased and I told you these are my opinions and this is 100% biased, but I think the Orlando Magic are a B tier storyline the indiana pacers last year were really one of the surprises in the nba i don't think anyone knew they were going to be this good i certainly didn't making the in-season championship game and then they added in pascal siakam halfway through the year this team looked really good they had the best offense last year behind Halliburton's all nba season and they made it all the way to the conference finals now the question is was last year a fluke reaching the conference finals was not on a lot of fans bingo cards when it came to the indiana pacers now that you're here you need to prove that this was only a sneak peek i mean we still remember when trey young led the atlanta hawks to the eastern conference finals in 2021 and has done nothing else this cannot be the same story for the indiana pacers and tyrese halliburton are the Pacers a one-hit wonder, or will they prove they're here to stay? I'm putting the Indiana Pacers as B tier. Speaking of the Hawks, let's go to them next. They were one of the worst teams in the NBA last season and were awarded with the first overall pick. A pick that's been so undercovered that no one cares to learn his name, and we're not going to talk about him. DeJounte Murray was shipped over to New Orleans Pelicans after two years of the Young and Murray backcourt failed to work. There was some speculation that Young would be dealt too as his team was looking to clear house, but right now it seems like they might be stuck with Trey Young and a very ill-equipped roster. So the main story for the Hawks will be, is Trey Young going to be in the Hawks jersey at the end of the year? That's pretty much it. Uh, e tier for the Atlanta Hawks. The Clippers are a very odd team. Just last year, they had Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, James Harden, and Russell Westbrook. And despite all that star power, they never felt dominant and dealt with injuries all year. With Russ and PG gone, all focus will shift over to Kawhi Leonard and James Harden. But with Kawhi, it's always been about health. He hasn't completed a playoff run since 2020 and missed this year's Olympics due to injury. Then you have James Harden, who somehow is 35 years old now, and I feel like I am aging at the speed of light. When did James Harden get 35? Oh my gosh. Anyways, he's expected to run this offense, and I just really don't know how it's going to be. We are four years removed from prime James Harden on the Rockets, even though it does not feel like it. And the reality is he's just not that player anymore. And there are serious questions about how effective he can really be in today's NBA with his outdated style of play. Overall, this Clippers team will come down to Kawhi Leonard's health and how well James Harden will play. I think they're a C tier storyline, but they could be a B tier with that stadium. Cause boy, oh boy, that is one of the best stadiums in the league. I think I've said this in two videos now, but man, I gotta visit that Clippers stadium. That is beautiful. Good job, Steve Ballmer. The Miami Heat are another odd team to me. Every year, you look at this roster, and I swear you just think, there is no way this team is going to compete for an NBA championship. But somehow, Jimmy Butler drags them to the finals or the conference finals. Except for last year, 
The Heat looked mortal in the playoffs last season, which was mainly due to Jimmy Butler's health. Alongside Butler, Hero also suffered injuries for most of the season. Butler is now entering his contract year and there are rumors that he might leave. It puts the Heat in a tricky position. Do you go all in on Jimmy Butler and this roster to make another run? Or do you completely blow it up? There's also this weird feeling around the league that the Heat have been passed up by the rest of the East and that they're not once the contenders that they used to be, which is very odd to me because this team has made the finals two times in the last four years it's gonna be a very interesting season for me with the heat and i actually think one of the teams that i was not expecting to look forward to until i really started diving into this research but now i really am looking forward to seeing what they do with this team so they get an a tier ranking i'll be real the new Orleans pelicans are one of these teams i just don't care about i think they have too many chefs in the kitchen they have brandon ingram cj mccollum zion and now Deshante murray like, who's your top dog? Who's your second option? If your top guy is Zion Wilson, well, he's hurt all the time. So if he's your top option, you're playing with an injured one all the time. And I don't know, this team looks good on paper, but I just don't buy it. Brandon Ingram is entering a contract year and some people think he might be traded mid-season, which would shake up some things and would make one team a lot better if he goes to them. And Zion has yet to play in the playoff series and this team is not winning anything without them. In my opinion, the Pelicans are C tier, but I am interested to see what they do in the offseason, but this is about the regular season, so they're C tier for me. Last year, the Milwaukee Bucks went all in trading away Drew Holiday for Damian Lillard, a move that was supposed to position this team as one of the best teams in the East. But after a very disappointing season, the Bucks championship window is closing very rapidly. This season is a very crucial one for the Bucks, especially with the Celtics building a dynasty, the Knicks adding more firepower, and the rest of the East just getting younger. The real question now will season two of dame and Giannis pan out overall i think bucks are entering in some of their last years to make this roster of Giannis and chris milton being your core guys really work or you have to blow it all up i think it's a c tier losing demar de rosen really has begun the chicago bulls rebuild in all honesty i can't name the starting five of the chicago bulls i do know they do some tiktoks during media day but I can't name a single player. The Bulls are in full tank mode. The only bright spot for this team is the emergence of Kobe White last year. Now, he's not a player you 100% build around, but he is a guy that you keep on your team for the long haul. But with DeMar DeRozan now gone, the time is now ticking on when do you pull the plug on Zach Levine. Zach Levine has been in trade talks the last few seasons, but it finally feels like the time to trade him away. Overall, I think the Bulls are in a very boring position, so I'm putting them at D here. Let's move over to the team that the Bulls traded DeMar to, the Sacramento Kings. The Kings took a step back last season after getting eliminated in the play-in. Disappointed because this was one of the teams last year that I expected to take a big leap, but they regressed. De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis both had monster years, but they still came up short. It only made sense for them to attack for agency hard and bring in DeMar DeRozan. He is going to give this team the much needed firepower at the wing position. They also were able to bring back Malik Monk, who if was healthy, probably would have been the sixth man of the year last year. This is one of the main teams I'm actually going to be watching this year. I want to see how DeMar plays and I want to kind of get my get back for them playing so bad last year. Like, I need to all play good this year, Kings. I'm putting you guys at B tier. The Spurs are one of the most fascinating teams in the NBA for one reason. Victor, Win, Ben, Yama. Wimby is a bona fide superstar in this league and all eyes will be on him this season. The team brought in Chris Paul to give this roster a veteran presence, but more importantly to nurture Wimby into a dominant big. For the sheer fact that Wimby is generational, the Spurs are going S tier. He's must watch TV. The storyline of Wimby is too strong. There's nothing else I care about on this team, but he's that good. He's S tier, 100%. Here's the Rockets. This team made a really big push towards the end of last season to try to squeeze into a play-in, but they did not miss it. Despite that, this was a good sign to see the young team fighting so hard. This run was powered by Jalen Gray, who absolutely took over late last season. They also, in my opinion, got the best player in this year's draft, which is Reed Shepard, who can have an instant impact. Overall, their storyline is actually pretty boring, so I'm going to put them at C tier. Ja Morant, all I can say for the Grizzlies. Ja was suspended last season and came back and then got hurt. In fact, the Grizzlies had the worst injury luck last season of any team. I mean, every player on that team was hurt all year. They were literally starting G League players towards the end of the season. This season seems to be very positive though for the Grizzlies. If they can remain healthy, they can easily be one of the best teams in the West. And Zach Eady actually looks like the perfect draft pick for this team. 
I'm very interested in the Grizzlies this year, and actually, I actually liked Zach Eady as a pick. Some a guy that low-key won the Lakers to look at, but regardless, B tier for the Memphis Grizzlies. The Cleveland Cavaliers are one of those teams you see in your schedule and you really don't know what to expect. On one hand, they have Donovan Mitchell, who's a walking bucket and could torch you any given night. And on the other hand, they're just kind of meh. They're a dark horse in the East to make a run, but at the same time, everyone knows this roster is not winning anything. They're really just stuck in that like middle ground in the NBA, which is the worst spot to be in. I'm giving the Cavaliers D tier. So we are now in the back end of the video with some of the teams that I personally don't care about. I don't think a lot of you guys care about unless you guys are diehard fans. And if you have the diehard fans, these teams, I'm sorry, but these teams really, no one really cares about. So we're gonna speed run the rest of this video to get through. All right, here we go, lock in. The Charlotte Hornets. Can Lamella Ball remain healthy? And will Brandon Miller suffer a sophomore slump? D tier. The Utah Jazz. They played with the whole Western Conference teasing that they were going to trade Laurie Markkinen and they never did. But right now I look at the Jazz like, when are you gonna blow this team up and go full rebuild? And why are you still hanging on to guys like Colin Sexton and Jordan Clarkson and John Collins that are just ruining your other younger guys' development? Just get rid of the guy players. Anyways, E tier. The Toronto Raptors. We all know like we're not gonna like go attack the championship this year. Like but there's, it, it makes no sense for us to like try and like win every single game like as much as we can and sacrifice uh, development in, in turn of that. Do I need to say more? Scotty Barnes is cool though, D tier. The Pistons, there is no way you can be worse than last year. At least I hope, E tier. The Brooklyn Nets, will Ben Simmons play basketball this year? E tier. The Washington Wizards. I don't know what this team really is, I'm, if I'm honest with you, bro. I don't really know what the Wizards are. Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma are just not a duo that can win anything. And I'm really not sure about Alex R yet, so E tier. And last but not least, the Portland Trailblazers, who actually have a pretty good young core forming. Scoot, Sharp. The only blemish on this team is DeAndre Ayton. I don't know what you're gonna do with him, but I'm gonna give you guys E tier. And that's about it. That's all 30 teams ranked based off the best storylines in the NBA. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know, first of all, I know this is completely different style of videos I usually do. I wanna do a little bit different, a little preseason warm up video for the season starting in like a week or two, whenever, depending on whenever this comes out. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments of this style of video if I should do more of these like ranking type videos. And also let me know what teams you guys looking for and who would you rank, who you disagree with, don't disagree with, whatever. I don't know, just get in the comments, have a conversation. I'm really looking forward to this year. I'm really looking forward to like these top three teams, the Celtics, Knicks, and the Spurs. Of course, the Lakers, but other than that, you guys have a beautiful day. Love you all. And as always, God bless.